and welcome to our service of worship this morning. This is the 31st of May and it is Casual Sunday. Casual Sunday at Iona Church means normally we would be in the sanctuary in casual clothes, jeans, shorts, t-shirts. Coffee would be set up at the back of the church. People could come and go as they please to pick up a cup of coffee and we would have more of a dialogue rather than a sermon. Well obviously some of those things have changed. But I do invite you to get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee. Wait a minute, you've been doing this all along since the videos have started, haven't you? Well, I have my coffee this morning. Out on my back deck, you'll hear the birds, you might even hear a dog bark. It is Casual Sunday, and welcome to our service of worship. I'd like to thank those who have been sending notes to me either by email or on our Facebook page. Some of you have commented on our YouTube channel about how much you appreciate these services. Those comments are greatly appreciated by myself and the others who are working on these services. As you know, I used to work in radio and the first few years I did the all night shift, the midnight to 6 a.m. shift. And at about 2.30, 3.30 in the morning, there was that ultimate question of, is there anybody out there listening? Well, sometimes I feel like this while recording these videos. Is there anybody out there? And so your comments mean a great deal. Thank you so much. Thanks again to those who are reading for us each and every Sunday. And thanks again to my friend Dave Decker, who is producing these videos for us. Kathy Lee, your music is beautiful. Thank you as well. Let us come to worship God as we join together in the responsive call to worship, which will be printed on your screen. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit, and inspire our thoughts and actions. Stir in our hearts, Holy Spirit, and fill us with energy to spread joy in the world. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit, and move us to bring hope to those in despair. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit, as we worship and witness to God's coming reign. Let us join in the prayer of approach, the prayer of adoration and confession. Loving God, compassionate Son, healing Spirit, with tender kindness, you transform our lives with your presence. You turn weeping into laughter, sorrow into joy, and death into life. We come in adoration this day to pause to worship you. We rest from our work and responsibilities. We set aside our distractions and activities to praise you for the beauty that fills your world and to enjoy our life in you. Holy One, source of our lives, we confess that we have not always listened for your Spirit's call. You call us to love our enemies, but we cling to animosity old and new. You call us to unity in the body of Christ, but we remain divided. You send us into the world to be witnesses 
but we avoid opportunities to share our joy in Christ. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Hear us as we share with you the secrets of our heart in this silence. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, God's generous love reaches out to embrace us. In Christ, we are forgiven, set free to begin anew in the renewing power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God for this most generous gift. Amen. Let us listen now for the Word of God, as recorded in the Gospel of John. A reading from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's Pentecost Sunday. It's the Sunday in which the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples. We have two scenarios. The one from John's Gospel that Alice read for us, where Jesus is in, uh, comes into the room where the disciples have gathered and breathes on them the Spirit. Then we have that other familiar case of the giving of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which is recorded in Acts. I'm sure you're familiar with the story. It begins on the day of Pentecost, when it had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And Peter said, what? We're having fish again? We always have fish. We've had fish all week. What are we doing with fish? Can we have chicken or something? Lamb, maybe. John said, Peter, Peter, calm down. I was at the market the other day and I bought this new sauce. It's supposed to be really, really good. So this sauce called Tabasco was passed around the table and each of the disciples sprinkled a little bit on their fish. Peter, of course, being Peter, went overboard and sprinkled a great deal on his fish. And then after giving thanks, they all took a bite and the sound of a rushing wind as the breath intake happened and tongues as of fire descended upon them. Well, okay, that wasn't quite how Acts described Pentecost. Susan Sparks, who is a minister at Madison Avenue, uh, Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York City, who is also a bar certified lawyer and also a stand up comic who travels the, the late night shows across the US, invited us once in a workshop to imagine using humor in scripture. And so those are her ideas about how to enliven this story of Pentecost, which we hear oh so often. But what does Pentecost say to us? What, what does it mean today, the gift of the Holy Spirit? We have two different ways in which the gift was given. But in both of them, there are two underlying themes that tie them together. The first is communication. Jesus breathed on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. The disciples in the Acts account, they too were gathered together. And when they received the Spirit, they were able to communicate and talk to those 
in, gathered in the courtyards in their own language. Each heard the disciples speak in their own tongue. Communication with God's people, whether they are friend or stranger, is important, and the Spirit allows for this. The second theme which I'd like to look at is the theme of how we treat people. In that Acts account, when the disciples are able to communicate with people of different races and languages and, and from different backgrounds, we realize that the gift of the Spirit gives to us that gift, not to judge or build walls, but to find ways in which we can speak and understand and hear. The same is true in the John account. Jesus tells the disciples, the sins you forgive will be forgiven. How you treat people will be important is the bottom line. And though those two themes, especially the one about how we treat people, come to life when we add the gifts, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. There's a list of them found in Galatians, and you probably are familiar with them. Love, patience, joy, peace, kindness, generosity, self-control, and faithfulness. Those are the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit. And so today I would ask if we were in the sanctuary, how do we use those gifts? Where do you see them in your lives? And you folks would, of course, give me answers and we would have a great discussion about how the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit are visible in our lives. But because of the video, I'm going to trust that you're thinking of ways in which the Spirit's fruits are seen in your life. How do we live in the Spirit, because you and I have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells within us, is poured out upon us. And so, if we live in the Spirit, all these fruits of the Spirit should come out of our living. People should see kindness and patience and self-control and faithfulness in how we live our life and in how we treat others. So, today's question then is, how is the fruit of the Spirit visible in your life? How do we in this day and age meet violence with kindness? How do we in this age meet temptation with self-control? How do we in this day and age meet despair with joy. We're learning a lot about patience in this time of pandemic. How do we show that patience to others? The gifts of the Holy Spirit are called in Galatians the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And that means that the seed planted within us, that Holy Spirit given to us at Pentecost, will bear fruit in our lives if we live by the Spirit. And so the challenge today, as it is every day, but especially today when we focus on this wondrous gift of Pentecost, is how are those gifts, how are those fruits coming to life in us? How is that seed God planted within us, that seed of the Spirit of God, flourishing and blossoming in your life? I can't answer those questions for you, but you can. And so I invite you to think today, to give thanks for the gift of the Spirit, and also to remember that that gift bears fruit and find the ways in which the fruit of the Spirit is seen in you. Now to the King, immortal, invisible, God only wise, be all honor and glory 
this day and forevermore. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us on this day of Pentecost and renew our faith. Reawaken our love for God. Let your flames warm our hearts with trust in Jesus and dare us to do great things in his name. Spirit of power and promise, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us energy to serve you in Christ Church. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission and to learn from this time when we have to do things differently in worship and pastoral care. Open our hearts to connect with those for whom the time of social distancing has been very difficult. Open our hands to share the tasks that need doing and open our lips in prayer and praise. Spirit of power and promise, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us understanding. For those whose lives seem so different from ours, and those facing situations because of the pandemic that we didn't encounter. Understanding for those with whom we've disagreed and for problems and challenges we will now face at home, at work, and in your world as we try to recover from the effects of the coronavirus. Spirit of power and promise, hear our prayers and blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring healing for all who face pain and illness, discouragement and disappointment, made so much keener because of isolation. Healing for those who know sorrow, sadness and grief, and for those whose face those who face stress and pressures as they rebuild their lives. Bring healing to the earth, to places of upheaval and to ecosystems at risk. Spirit of power and promise, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring us the compassion we see in Christ Jesus. Blow through us and refresh us as your faithful followers. Equip us to serve the world that you love in your name. As together we say the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you will have a wonderful day of Pentecost and renewal. Enjoy the day, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of you, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.